Severe weather hitting tonight, millions bracing for storms. We've already seen damage from Texas all the way up to the northeast. The ominous storm clouds moving in over Abilene, Texas, and this view from a farmer in Lorraine, Texas. That's a land spout there. Reports of a half dozen tornadoes and tonight in the northeast, the landslide. Ginger is standing by with a new track tonight, but first ABC's Gio Benitez on the scene. Tonight, severe weather across the nation, hitting from the Gulf to the northeast. In Texas, six reported tornadoes tearing through the countryside and golf ball sized hail rendering highways white. Drivers dodging hailstones under overpasses. That unseasonable wintry weather and even snow making an annoying comeback in the Midwest and Northeast that will last for days. High winds downing trees near Philadelphia, one landing on a house. And in Florence, New Jersey, wet ground turning to erosion, a landslide causing a dangerous situation for this neighborhood. And from here on the Delaware River, you can see that massive landslide, a house right there on the very edge. If more rain hits this area, there's no telling what can happen to that house. This is our home. We put a lot of effort into it. I put a lot of love in this house. And tonight, town officials don't want the homeowners here. They've been told to leave in fear of a total collapse. David. All right, Gio, our thanks to you. Let's get right to Ginger Z, who's tracking this. More coming tonight. Just moments ago, a severe thunderstorm watch has been issued just north of Austin, Texas. David, this is in that pocket of severe storm activity tonight that we're watching. So Waco, you're in it. Dallas down to San Antonio, be on alert. And then a little bit back there in parts of Colorado and western Kansas. But tomorrow, this is the Friday threat area. Shreveport's in it, Dallas, Waco almost up to Little Rock, and the elevated risk also includes just south of Kansas City off to the west. Albeit, it's not spring in some places in the nation. Look at these numbers. By tomorrow morning, temperatures will be sub-freezing in a lot of places. That's why we see frost advisories and freeze warnings from Chicago to Knoxville. The severe weather down south. This picture out of Houston really tells the story. They got more than two inches of rain in 15 minutes. And this morning, about 100,000 customers without power between Dallas and Houston. They are soaked, and this thing is not over. The slow-moving system is bringing heavy rain, high winds, flash floods, large hail, lightning strikes, and on top of it all, possible tornadoes. It's set to last straight through the weekend as it marches eastward with 30 million folks in the path. And Rob is tracking it all for us this morning. Good morning, Rob. Hi, Paul. This thing is huge and it's moving slowly. That's why it's going to last so long. Matter of fact, it's really two systems that are combining one across parts of Colorado. You see the spin there and then tapping into the Gulf of Mexico, some moisture there. Uh, the storm reports, we saw 56 of them throughout the day and evening last night. A lot of it happening overnight. A uh, hail the size of tennis balls in parts of uh, uh, Houston. Incredible amounts of flooding rain. Power is out. I mean, from the Midwest down to the Gulf Coast, really Texas, Southeast Texas, especially seen the worst of it. Happening overnight, severe weather across the Midwest and Texas. In Houston, terrifying moments inside this circus tent. Out the tent through the emergency exits only. Yeah. No pushing, no shopping. Watch the children. Watch as powerful winds rip the sides off the big top wide open. Rain pouring in, the crowd in a panic. Over 100,000 customers without power from Houston to Dallas. And intense downpours drenching Harris County with over five inches of rain. The flood control district urging residents to stay home and stay safe. Vehicles across the area swamped in floodwaters. Traffic stopped on Highway 59. In Angleton, Texas, tennis ball size hail hammering the ground. And in the same state, a scary explosion at an oil tank facility. Dangerous flames and huge clouds of smoke hurled high into the sky. Lightning believed to be the cause. Thankfully, no injuries reported. Further north in Kansas, ominous funnel clouds spin over Goodland. And winter weather causing this massive pileup in Wyoming. 60 cars and trucks on Interstate 80. Over 20 people treated at the local hospital. Incredible here mid to late April that we're seeing this snowfall. It's going to continue today. You still see the swirl up there, but the severe threat with that energy is going to intensify not just today, but I think as we go through tomorrow. So let's break it down for you. That front slowly moves into the plains. Here's a severe threat from Corpus Christi again up through Houston, Dallas, up through Wichita. A strong wind, some large hail, maybe a tornado or two. I think that that chance will increase as we go through tomorrow. The Arklatex, uh, the lower and mid Mississippi River Valley is going to see a, a 
decent chance of severe weather. This is the rainfall across Houston. You saw that video, just some of this coming down. We had reports of over three inches coming down in 30 minutes in parts of Harris County. That is a rarity. So flash flood watches will continue across the I-10 corridor all the way to uh, Mobile. Uh, intense rainfall continuing today. Severe storms are threatening many across the south this morning after several tornadoes touched down overnight. A new view from the air this morning shows flood waters surrounding homes, barns, and cars south of Dallas. Winds tore roofs off homes. A few have been leveled, thousands of without power as the threat continues this morning. Arzo Dost of our Dallas Fort Worth station, KTVT, is in Rio Vista, Texas. Arzo, good morning. Good morning. As the sun comes up here in Texas, we're starting to get a better idea of all the damage after the storms. This is the tractor of a trailer on its side, right behind it, a canopy blown over from a gas station. And that first named storm of the season, Anna churning in the Atlantic right now, picking up speed, targeting the coast. Severe weather in the plains, too. And Rob Marciano starts us off from Blanchard, Oklahoma. Good morning, Rob. Good morning to you, George. Uh, subtropical storm Anna is about 160 miles off the coastline of Myrtle Beach. Uh, subtropical because it's not fully tropical, but we're not quite in a hurricane season yet. Nonetheless, it's going to make a trek towards the Carolinas over the weekend, strengthening somewhat. Shouldn't become a hurricane, but it will lash that coastline with heavy rain, wind, and waves right through Sunday, George. Not quite hurricane season, but it is tornado season. You track those new storms overnight. Yeah, I mean, scenes like this are becoming prevalent across the plains, uh, George. This welding shot got, uh, got torn up. It's heavy uh, metal equipment, even the kitchen sink being thrown around. But last night, Texas by far got it the worst. This one means business. Overnight, Texas hit with tornadoes, record rainfall, and lightning leading to fires. Oh, my gosh. Tornado. Multi-vortex tornado. After tornado. Tearing through. Our neighbor called us and told us our house was gone. Oh, the tornado's right in front of me. Watch as this mammoth cyclone makes its way across Denton County, Texas. The skies in the Lone Star State literally lighting up overnight. One of those bolts responsible for this explosion at a gas well. Oh my God, a fire. Thankfully, no reports of injury. And after all the twisters, torrential rainfall. And if that weren't enough, Texas hit with a 4.0 earthquake just 30 miles southwest of Dallas. In Lincoln, Nebraska. I can't get home. It's horrible. What a mess. So much rain, it's being called one of the worst natural disasters in the state's history. Voluntary evacuations underway after seven inches of rain fell in just one night. And further out west in Colorado. I wonder if it's touching. A funnel cloud forming, followed by hard hitting hail. And with California dealing with drought conditions, watch as these tumbleweeds go flying into cars. Rain actually coming to Southern California today. It's that storm that's going to invigorate the plains. We are expecting what could be a major tornado outbreak over the next. Ladies and gentlemen, I begin as always with a recap of the past week's weather reports as given by the meteorologists who claim to be experts. Now that you have witnessed their fictions, allow me to demonstrate some reality. As I have explained in part two of this series, this severe weather is reliant on the large amount of cold water being vented by the power plants in various states and nations around the world. I am focusing on the United States in my series because this is where I am currently located. I stress to any who are watching this outside of the United States to do your own research. I will provide a how-to video in the coming months to assist you in this endeavor. However, I have included in all of my videos copious amounts of links which direct you to the resources which I use to conduct my own research. The first footage I provide in this video is from the dates May 6th through May 7th and are composed of the central United States. I have begun the process of locating the power plants precisely by using the websites linked in the description and then using Google Maps visible image view to zoom in and check the location for accuracy. You can verify these locations for yourself by following the links below. You will notice that under every sporadic large plume of very cold water, there will be a power plant directly underneath it or nearby.
In the next footage, what you are looking at is a continental view of the United States. Where I want to draw your attention is to the central states. You will see how every plume, save for the one coming from below the border of Texas and Mexico, have power plant markers directly underneath them. I have since verified that the plume coming from outside Texas does indeed have a power plant located underneath it, and will include maps of Mexico's power plant locations in future videos. I am still building these maps, so I ask that you bear with me. The final set of clips are focused on the two storm systems that were idling on the coasts for the dates May 7th through May 8th. I have completed the map of California and Nevada and again the plumes line up with known power plants that vent water. On the east coast you will notice that Cuban power plants seem to be feeding water to the storm sitting out at sea. A storm, might I add, that has since been upgraded to a tropical storm named Anna starting the hurricane season off early. If you appreciate the information provided in this video, please feel free to hit like and subscribe and share this with your friends and any who will listen.